What I think that makes uh, new art relevant and sets it apart is that it uh, has the courage to bring people over to Stavanger and just set loose in the street to make a network of human scale pieces that are more integrated in the landscape. These are not pieces that are imposed on you, these are pieces that you have to come across and make you explore. And that's what the street art used to be about. about power and rising up and all those um, ideas. What I really wanted is something that was quite powerful that kind of told people something that I believed in that actually, you know, we need to have some civil disobedience right now. You know, we need to stop just walking around in a, in a, in a dream world. Graffiti and street art as it was uh, practiced several years ago, it's in a way it can be the voice of the people. Whereas what we have called street art today is mostly these big institutional murals. And if you look at it like that, you cannot possibly refer to these two practices with the same term. In post-revolution Cairo, it took me two years to realize that the streets are really not accessible anymore. And so I started spraying no in different cities around the world, because now you don't really need to be physically in your city to get a message across. We're more connected now, and our, our governments are not realizing that. So until they realize, we still have the freedom to move across borders and communicate. I think progress has been made by two flames that have always been burning in the human heart. The flame of anger against injustice and the flame of hope we can build a better world. <laughs>